Tin Man is a living being which has been bred or has adapted itself to serve a purpose. I find that interesting. Why? Must living beings have a purpose? Or do we exist for no reason but to exist? I do not believe I am qualified to express an opinion. Oh, Data, you're uniquely qualified. You think a great deal about humanity. And you're an honest researcher. You don't treat anything as trivial or irrelevant. You want to try it all. You said in the transporter room that you could not read my mind. True enough. But I think I understand you pretty well. It worries you that I can't read your mind? Perhaps there is nothing to read. Nothing more than mechanisms and algorithmic responses. Perhaps you're just different. It's not a sin, you know. Though you may have heard otherwise. everyone to Deep Space Pride, a gay Star Trek podcast. I am Johnson and I am not alone today, nor am I ever, because I have my co-host here, Mike. Mike, how are you today? I am good and happy to be here as your Yes, co-host. you are here and you're present and okay. you have energy, right? I will find the energy, yes. You'll find the energy. You'll yeah. get it somehow. Yes. Happy Wednesday again. Yeah, it's We're Wednesday. Doing Wednesdays uh, consistently, apparently. Yeah, I think I'm a little low energy. I uh, had I went to the dentist today, and that always drains me a Wait, little. What bit. did you call like? What did you call it last week? It was like something Wednesdays or something, and I was like, "That's not a thing." Oh, uh, Wednesday woes. Wednesday woes. I was like, what the, "Was like, what the I don't. Fuck? I don't have any Wednesday woes. I mean, <laughs> I, lo- I love my dentist, and I love my dental experience. It just, you know, I think it takes a little bit out any of any cavities. Nope, no cavities. Just, oh, good uh, for you. I have, I feel like I have like one cavity a year somehow. I mean, I was looking at my teeth the other day, not that anyone needs to know this, but I thought like, I, I drink a lot of coffee slash tea. So it's, I love it's, coffee. Um, so my teeth get stained, but uh, I was also looking at my, like the bot, like my bottom row of teeth and looking at the top of the bottom row of teeth. And I thought, you know, those little, black spots that they usually pick at and try to find cavities and I was like oh no there might be some there but she didn't say she didn't find anything today so I'm happy about that um, that is a lot of information that is a super a lot of personal information <laughs> very detailed we but will, I do love Christine post your teeth x-rays in our social feeds yes where everyone where, actually cats. I didn't have x-rays this time so no oh, really no. oh no look at you I need to find a new dentist but I recommend mine, and it's not very far. You know, I you. actually have um a few friends that have really loved their dentists, so I have um a variety to choose from. Apparently, but there we'll see go. which of them actually accepts my insurance. Anyway, this is a Star Trek podcast, not a dietary podcast, so we can move on beyond this topic. Okay. Um, yeah, but anyway, Mike, how how else uh how else are you? <laughs> how oh, how are you doing otherwise? I cannot speak English today. I'm I am well. I am yeah. It's a it's a good week. It's beautiful weather here in New York City. Beautiful. It's a little balmy. It's like eighty mid eighties. Uh, yes, if you want to call that balmy, sure. Uh, after a winter of cold weather, I will take the balmy anytime. <laughs> I am a little nervous. Not nervous. Nervous is not the right word. I am global warming. And, what global warming? What are you nervous about? No, I, well, I am concerned about global warming, but that's, a, again, another podcast. Uh, no, I'm not concerned is not the right word. You know, Las Vegas, we're going to Las Vegas. Yes, we are. Uh, it is happening. I got my PTO approved. As did I. I am like, 
Live long and prosper, bitches. I'll see you later. I did not say live long and prosper from a PTO invite. I did say live long and prosper. I was going to write bitches, but then I was like, that might be inappropriate for like an invite going out to 30 people. So I didn't do that. <laughs> However, I did tell, I did let everyone know that I am going to be at, I, I just said it's Star Trek Las Vegas. I didn't right. want to be like the 55 year or whatever, or the, what the hell is that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So no, I, you know, I, I know it's really hot out there. It's going to be, Mid over August. 100 degrees i'm gonna melt i will complain and melt <laughs> oh, great they'll definitely be complaining oh no crying, not complaining crying, crying. they might be crying oh, no. <laughs> um so yeah no i i don't mind the the heat i just know that i hate the heat oh, i love the heat i love oh. uh so for me being warm is like perfect for my body when i'm cold i i think i've shared this with you before when i get cold i actually sweat more when i'm cold like my body has to work harder to warm <laughs> stay warm it's weird it's so um and not that i don't sweat in the summer but i do sweat more in the the winter if i am cold so anyway uh, but i'm excited we are we are in the process of booking everything but we yeah. are going to las vegas in august yes. for the yes. 55 year mission slash formerly known as star trek las vegas yes so we will be there, um, be there. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. You know, I am excited about it because it's the Enterprise 20th anniversary and I am still undergoing my Enterprise renaissance. Yeah, renaissance. I am uh, watching, re-watching. So I did, I did take your advice. I am re-watching season one. Thank you. You're I welcome. am enjoying it. You're welcome. Uh, it, it's, yeah, I, I think starting off in season four when things are kind of exciting and then going back and watching it you kind of you can you know it's just i don't know i'm enjoying it and it's sort of you know reliving the whole like first ventures into space of the enterprise crew it's just fun to watch so i'm excited because hopefully they're going to celebrate this in a nice way this summer so at the convention so yeah i'm um i'm not looking forward to the people or the crowds, or the, panel, <laughs> or the panels. <laughs> so, so are you looking forward to anything? I mean, you know, it's something to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, then we'll we'll have some good dinners at restaurants, right? We are, you know, that's I phase two. But I don't planning. like Vegas either. I told you this. I don't like Vegas as a city. It's like depressing to me. Yeah. At least the um, strip. I'm not a big fan of the strip. It's just like too much. Understood. But, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a, a bit, you know, I think I'm excited because we can make it whatever we want. Uh, this is our first time going out to, to a con Star Trek convention. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to, talk to any randos. <laughs> I don't want to talk to cast members. Um, I guess I can talk to you. Oh, thank you. Yes. So we have that. Well, I want to talk to people. I'm excited to talk to people. Maybe meet some podcast listeners. I'll uh, uh, barnacle onto you and, um, you know, say hi to our fans, but meekly behind you. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yes. We In any will. case. Yes. Yeah, something to look forward to. I'm so excited. Yeah. Well, it's only, you know, it's less than three months away. So that is exciting. So well, there's a lot happening with you between now and then. Yes. I mean, like... I, have, I have different things going on. Yes. Between now and then. Yes. Uh, to pass the time and things to look forward to. So I am excited about that. But mm -hmm. I'm also excited about this because I get, we will get to meet our executive producers. We will get to meet other members of the network. We will get to meet hopefully some podcast fans. And uh, also, you know, all very I'm, exciting prospects. And I will hopefully, uh, I don't know, I don't know if there's a star I'm really looking forward to seeing, but I will think more about that. You know, well, Gates McFadden is going to be there. She is, yes. I do like, like, oh. uh, like. Gates. I don't know if, um, you know, I, I don't know if we're ever going to get close to her, but she'll be there. I don't know who else is going. Uh, there are a lot Unclear. of clear. There are a lot of people. It's on the website. Uh, I can't remember if Jonathan Frakes is going, but that would be cool. I feel Jonathan Frakes goes to like everything. Let's see. Celebrity guests. I'm on the site. Okay. Uh, 114 incredible guests. Okay. There we go. 
You know who I'd really like to meet, but he's oh, George very... going. Oh, Nichelle Nichols is going. Oh, William Shatner is going. I don't know a lot of people okay, going. We also, don't need to Martin we, Green's going. We don't need to run down through <laughs> the entire everybody. list. Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because uh, people were in cause and effect. Get out of here. <laughs> Doug Jones is going. Oh, oh, that's cool. There you go. These are like really nice headshots. Um, in any case, well, there I we think go. it'd be cool to meet Will Wheaton. I think that would be really cool. Um, but he's he's not unlike you in a lot of ways. Why? Why do you say that? Uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't want to be around a ton of people and has, you know, I mean, he's very open about his anxieties and- I don't um, have anxiety. Okay. I'm an introvert. Yes. But so it's probably half the population and I don't have anything in common with I'm an introvert way. too, but I will be a functional extrovert. I'm totally functional. I don't know what you're talking about. I, did. I was just <laughs> talking about me. I'm not talking about you. Oh my gosh. We need to move on because our our listeners are going to be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> what is right happening now? right now? All right. So we're going hey. to Las Vegas. If you are going to Las Vegas, dear podcast listeners, Please let us know. We would love to. Mike will love to talk to you. There we go. Yes. So uh, there we go. I I'll am... wave from a distance. I am apparently the f- the PR slash the face the face of, of, of deep podcast. face pride. All right. Anyway, All right. so you know what else is going on that I'm really excited about too. Um. Our giveaway. We're we're. Oh, our, that's our, right. And our nice first thing. giveaway. Nice segue. Uh, nice segue. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I for one knew it was a party the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. I did. Then why were you crying? I just. Uh, it, it was cold in there. I've got sensitive corneas. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge you all to a duel. Pick your weapons. I pick the mine. Get out of here, Q. No, we are done with random stuff today. We're not dealing with any of your Q bullshit. Oh, Sifu Play Mariner, I want to put humanity to the ultimate test. Okay, I'm not French. No, go find Picard. Oh, Picard. He's no fun. He's always quoting Shakespeare. He's always making wine. Uh, yeah, our first giveaway is happening. Uh, we are giving away the season one Blu-ray of Lower Decks, along with eight character cards. And uh, it's super exciting. And uh, all you have to do, there are two ways to enter. Uh, if you follow us, you need to follow us on either Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and our handles there are at Deep Space Pride. Correct. And then we have, so I just pinned the tweet at the top of our Deep Space Pride um, Twitter feed. And so if you go there, you'll see the pinned tweet. If you like that tweet, follow us and also tag someone who's got your back like mariner does yeah uh you will be in the running to win a blu-ray and eight card eight art card set of the crew uh the other way to enter is to go to our instagram which is also at deep space pride correct and uh like one of our two posts that are going to be there as of this recording when you hear this there will be a second post so you can you can pick from either one either post uh you just need to be a follower one of our followers you need to like the the post and you need to uh tag someone who's got your back like mariner and so that is so if you're listening to this as it comes out on friday morning uh you have just Till Friday night to do this. So do not delay. Go there uh, and uh, like and tag your friend and follow us. And on Saturday, we're going to be picking three winners. Three. Three. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So we are excited exciting. about this. Our first yeah. Giveaway. Our first giveaway. And, uh, yes. and I, um, I've been told that we will we might be able to do a discovery giveaway later this summer. All right, well. don't spoil the beans in case it doesn't happen. <laughs> they might they might be like these PR people might might be like these people are dumb. We're not going to give them the no, 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 giveaway. No. So, go to either our Twitter or Instagram at Deep Space Pride and enter today, literally today. That is correct because by the time this episode comes out, it will be pretty much the last day. Uh, yes. our giveaway so, so 
Um, but if you do miss that for whatever reason, we will have future opportunities, hopefully. And uh, we'd love for you to follow us on either Twitter or Instagram. And oh, uh, uh, win and, stuff. Yes. So there we go. So that's what else I'm excited about. Um, you know, there's a lot of random, r- random people on this celebrity guest list. Lynn Salvatore, who is Kate Mulgrew's stunt double, is going to be there. So, oh, okay. Yeah, there are, you know, there there's are, a lot of, yeah, a lot of randos. Goodness. So, yeah, it's that to look forward to. All the uh, but I didn't see. Did you see a lot? Have you seen a lot of any enterprise people on that list yet? Is um, this list is massive, okay. so I can neither confirm nor deny. There are quite a few discovery folks on here. Okay, um, like basically all like all the major discovery crew members are there. Um, I'm still scrolling. Tim Ross is gonna be there. Terry Farrell, your favorite's going to be there. Oh, I love Terry Farrell. I, I think Denise there. Crosby is going to be there too. Denise Crosby is going to be there. She is a confirmed guest. Yeah. Um, oh dear. Sorry. Uh, cool. Oh, um, Travis Mayweather is going to be there. Okay, cool. Okay, Anthony Montgomery is going to be there. You know, as I'm rewatching, Connor Trenier is going to be there. Nice. Like yes, yes. Yeah, oh, Dominic great. Keating's going to be there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm wondering, uh, probably no Scott. Jeffrey Bob Combs there. is going to be there. Oh, awesome. there you go. See, there's someone you have sort of a smile and a. I wouldn't talk to him though. <laughs> gosh. I'm just, uh, I'm just letting you know that, that he's oh, just from guests. Gosh. Okay. Well, like, what anyway. are we going to talk about? It's like, hey, see you later. Thank you. You're a great actor. You did a great job with Wei Yun and all the other characters. I saw you on an episode of Babylon Five. You know, you've had a really. I'm not one career. to provide people words of affirmation, so. Fair enough. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> anyway, there is Johnson in a, in a minuscule digestible description. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, Mike, are there any other announcements we need to go through before we get into our episode of the week? Mike, are you okay? No, I, th- I think that's fine. No, I think you, we're good. You, I don't know. You had your head in your hands. So I was like, <laughs> this, is, this is a problem. But, uh, but you're no, present. I am, I am good. I am good. Uh, yeah. So as a quick refresher for those who may be listening to this podcast series for the first time, we are going through basically a run of Star Trek Next Generation episodes that we think are underappreciated and I was talking to Mike right before the recording of this podcast, but I guess we forgot to define what is technically underappreciated because I have an idea for season four. And I went and told it to Mike, Mike was like, that's not underappreciated. I was like, what do you mean it's not underappreciated? No one talks about this episode. And he was like, there was a reference in Lower Decks. And then I was like, uh, Lower Decks references every little thing on every, you know, any random episode, they're going to get like, Mike Mann's going to re- reference it. So that's not really a good gauge for whether or not something is underappreciated. So, you know, we didn't go through that exercise before we decided to dive into this series, unfortunately. So I, I guess everyone is just at the mercy of our random selection. Um, there you go. Just- I mean, the other thing too is that it's easier to pick a underappreciated episode in seasons one and two. Because uh, and- they suck! <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Keep on going. I, I, you're making me laugh. I can't All laugh right. when and keep going. All right. Okay. Whatever. You know, it's sort of like when you sneeze or cough when we try to start recording. All right. All right. All right. You know, that sort of thing. So, all right. Anyway, th- we do have some disagreement as to what constitutes an underappreciated episode. But I guess we could reframe this as we are reappreciating some some interesting episodes that people don't really talk about that much. Okay, except for the fact that it was a major reference. In- it was one word, literally one word. And the internet exploded when that word came up. Really? All the memes. It was in our when we did the episode. You even no, I remember the episode. I remember that episode, but that but literally boy had one word at the end. He had like he had this like diatribe 
at the end of that court scene. And there were probably like three or four references just in that, you know, that speech. And sure, literally yes. it's at the very end. So no, yes. we did have, a, we, obviously we had the reference to that episode when we talked about it, but whatever, uh, we it's even, fine. It's fine. We, <laughs> yeah, we even referenced it on our Instagram. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we so, can move on now. We can move on. Anyway, anyway, for you, so for this episode of the podcast, yes, let's we talk will about be talking this. about the season three episode, season season, yeah, season three episode, Tin Man. So why don't we talk about Tin Man? Mike, are you ready? Captain, the Romulan ship is hailing the alien using their equivalent of lingua code. Response. Nothing so far, Commander. Why should it answer? What could it possibly have in common with them? But you're so sure it'll talk to you. Captain, the Romulans are arming all disruptors. Yellow alert. Prepare for evasive action of the first change in the Romulans' course. With our shields in this position, we can't... No! Lose. No! We're not the target! It's Tin Man. What do you mean? Do they intend to destroy it? Those are their orders if they can't secure the alien. Increase speed to intercept the Romulan vessel. Their lead is too great, sir. Hail them! We cannot allow them to- They won't it. listen to you! Danger. Come to. Do not allow. I am ready. So here All we right. go. Uh, just a brief description for those of you who don't remember Tin Man. A former patient of Troy's arrives to help the Enterprise establish contact with an unusual alien ship before the Romulans can reach it. Uh, that's actually one of the best summaries that yeah, Netflix has good. ever provided for pretty an episode. Good. That is dead on exactly so, what happens. So Mike, when was the last time that you watched Tin Man? Do you remember? I don't remember. It's been, a, I would say, a decade, maybe okay. longer. I mean, it's been a while. That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't maybe. really, I haven't done a total TNG walk, rewatch. And I would say that, you know, if I if I did pick and choose a few TNG episodes, it would probably be the favorites that everyone loves because, you know, you like to relive those moments. So uh, this was a, a, a good pick from an underappreciated episode standpoint. Yes, I, you know, it was because we were kind of thinking about what season three episode to go for. And this was one of my suggestions because, I mean, I've, again, I have done a uh, select of rewatch or TNG. And when I first watched this episode, I remember when I first watched this episode. And again, season three is my sweet spot because that's when I really started to watch The Next Generation slash Star Trek in general. And I don't know, this episode really captured my imagination for some reason. Um, I think it was just the idea of an organic ship, in this case, Tin Man slash Gom2. And it was just alone in space. The crew had died off and it wanted to commit suicide. I just like, I was just, I don't know. There's something about this that I thought was really interesting. And then also the execution of GOM2 and even the design of the ship was very interesting and cool, both the inside and outside. At least for then, I thought it was really original. And you have an organic vessel that could telepathically speak to this guy who's like crazy. And I don't know, there's something about this episode that I thought was really cool. And you also had this race to GOM2 between the two Romulan DJRX, DDR, DDR ships, can we say it? DDR Dex ships um, and the Enterprise. And you literally have gone to like destroying one of the ships. There was just a lot packed into this episode that I thought was really cool um, when I first saw it. So, you know, I, I, I don't know why, it just really stuck with me. I think um, even- And a great like, opening reference to Encounter at Farpoint. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know. um, I think that there are, um, there's there, there's definitely a lot in this episode that's working for it. And then Tam Elbrin, who is really like just not your normal, well-adjusted 
you know, got like guest star, I guess, on a TNG episode. Um, you know, I, I thought that that was really interesting too. But yeah, Mike, what did you think? Yeah, I really enjoyed the the whole episode. Uh, you know, the the Tam yelling at people and interrupting people got annoying a little bit. Oh, and then he um he the actor goes on to become, I think he becomes the principal on Buffy or something. Do you remember? Oh, you ever watch Buffy. Oh, wow. yeah. He's like the evil principal. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. Not Armin Shimmerman who was, I think, also the, a principal on Buffy, as I, I'm, like, vaguely remembering. He's, like, he's, like, the demon principal. Yes, yeah, the, the actor does go on to, to do some other things uh, after this, but, yeah, that, that's true. No, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it right from the beginning. Uh, also, you know, transitioning from a season two episode to a season three episode, you see... Yes. The Stop increase different. in production values, the new yeah. uniforms, uh, which, you know, this is late in the season. This is, you know, episode 20 of the season. So, you know, they are well, almost to the end of their third season coming up on Best of Both Worlds, uh, where the show really just kind of is running on all cylinders, just excellently done. So, you know... I really enjoyed the interactions between the characters. Uh, yeah, I just, there's, you know, I, I really did, you know, I loved it from start to finish. I really lo loved uh, the hood coming back and bringing this guy on. I mean, and, and the captain talk. It was like a random this. reference. I was like, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but I got it and sure. I, you know, didn't expect it. So it was, it was kind of cool. Um, you know, Tam is a, you know, obnoxious, rude person. I guess one of the thoughts that I just had. He's not well saying, adjusted. He's like, he's basically he like, he basically has Asperger's. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I guess my, my problem with this is, is you have an adult who's like this and clearly not fitting into society, but he's, uh, he is, he is a uh, beta zoid, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. He's beta zoid. He's bitazoid. Uh, and why didn't anybody teach him how to put his mental shields up? Like things like that. Well, they kind of explain it. Like it's because he was like born with it and he just never really learned how to control it very well or something. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, I thought that the look and feel of Gump 2 was very Disney-esque in the sense really? of like, so uh just disney ask kind of like inside or the yeah the inside the inside okay. you know like all of the the i mean they did a wonderful job with the inside but it felt like you were walking through something at disney oh like a, like a ride, ride or something. yeah like a ride that you're walking through with all these uh you know it reminds me a little bit of the et ride at disney um you know, or just even some other, you know, just the, the general feel was very reminiscent of, of that. Uh, but it was really well done. It, you know, it, it's the, 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 the stakes were high in this episode. I think that's the other thing that, that I really enjoyed about this ep episode was that the stakes were high almost from the beginning. You know, there was just a level of escalating danger and importance and all of these things that were, you know, you know, the idea that this, this uh, D Deridex Romulan ship was cloaked, but also mm -hmm. shadowing them and they couldn't prove it. They didn't know what it was. Right. And, but just creating this ominous like threat level throughout this whole episode, I thought was really like good drama, like not, and not overdone. None of the, none of this was overdone. I didn't think, even though I thought that Tam was, uh, you know, a little annoying. A little yeah, he was a little much, you know. Uh, I would have told him to get out of my head and stop, yeah. stop doing, you know, I would have yelled at him. I would have said, don't interrupt well, people me. People did yell at him. That's the thing. Like, he was, like, not particularly welcome. Because he was rude, but. Uh, no, because he also caused, like. Oh, murder, yes, like, right, right, yes. Yeah, he, he had, he had some. Right, he had some history, especially with Will. Uh, killing two of his uh, academy classmates. It very much reminded me of 
it was like well wasn't it like an away mission gone wrong Something, yeah, wrong. like a diplomatic mission. It was very, wrong. it very much reminded me of only because I've been jumping around on TNG. Yeah, um, it reminded me of Rolaren because her she had a very similar introduction where she was in prison because she basically got court martialed because of some sort of way mission that went wrong. So that when she was brought on to the Enterprise, she basically figure out this Bajoran Cardassian situation in that episode. I, I watched this like a month ago, so it's still fresh. Um, she had a very similar, like very chilly response. Like when she beamed onto the ship, people were like, basically, you're not welcome here. And Will actually had a very similar response to Tim Elrond as he did Roll Aaron. I was like, all right, you know what? Calm down, princess. Like, <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Yes, yes, you're, you're the Federation's best. Yes, thank you very much. You know, you don't have to like stuff in everyone's faces the second they beam board. Anyway. Well, I mean, you know, Will is very loyal to his friends and to his colleagues. So anything that jeopardizes them is- Yeah, he, uh, yes. It goes against his dearest principles. We understand. Thank yes. you, Will Riker. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Uh... I did really like a lot of the interactions between Tam and Data. I thought that was really cool, especially given that Tam can read Data. So he really liked that. He really liked it because of that. And he actually had to. I thought it was interesting where Tam was actually like, oh, I actually need to talk to you <laughs> to like figure talking out who you are. A, yeah, talking at a normal you know, voice, like being calm. Like it was the calmest you've seen him all episode was when he was in Data's quarters or when he and Data were on the ship, um, all of these things that, you know, yeah, I thought that that was really, really good to see that that, that relationship actually calmed him and probably made me at least tolerate him a little bit more. Uh, so it was definitely, um, definitely a nice, nice piece i think there are a lot of little nice pieces i thought yeah, that yeah. cam and deanna talking in this quarter mm -hmm. was also a nice little little snippet you know so i think that there is and also you know to be fair to will because i i'm you know i i do i mean i am a Riker fan uh you know tam right off the bat at the briefing basically held back the whole Romulan piece of this until the very end. And oh, he, you know, he, I think he was like, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, right. so, so I understand, you know, I understand where Will's coming from when it comes to oh, leaving out important details. The Romulans are kind of an important detail. So, um, yeah, so there's that. I, you know, it, I agree the design of the ship was really cool. I, I thought that was really cool to see the seat kind of appear out of nowhere, which was interesting. Uh, yeah, it also had a little, you know, another throwback to, to encounter at Farpoint. Yeah. Although, although the interior was very different on the, on the alien spaceship and, and encounter at Farpoint, you get that same vibe, you, right. you, you know, that living being vibe, uh, right. which I thought was, was a nice touch as well. So there are a lot, you know, a little, some more little tidbits from encounter at Farpoint in there, I think. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to remember if there's anything else in this episode that really stands out for me. Um, yeah, I do think, um, what you said when it comes to these com like conversations, I think that you really see that because we're jumping from season to season, I think that, um, we really see that evolution of the way that these scripts are written going from season one to season two, season three, where you get more of these like more personal conversations and these moments to kind of let relationships happen. I think that we get more of that, particularly in season three. I, I really see that a lot, like, because I just did like the season three rewatch or most of the episodes in season three. And they spend a lot of time just in these more quiet moments that I don't really think that we got as much in season one, season one, less so, very infrequently. And then and then beginning of season two, we start to get that a little bit more in terms of the, the time that's spent on character development and making these characters 
a little more intricate, um, you know, definitely not as intricate as like DS9, but at least giving them some more depth and more to work with dramatically. Yeah, and I think also you get the the feeling that the Romulans are a threat in this one, which I, I can't say up until now that you really have seen that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the end of the first season brings about the, the whole, uh, the Romulans are back, but yeah. this episode really makes them seem like a, a serious threat. Um, although the space battle was a little like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was fun. You know, I think the uh, looking at, cause I'm rewatching enterprise. I think that the enterprise battles when they get attacked are a little bit more realistic uh, I mean, Enterprise also had a lot more CG to work with. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, but you know, the the them shooting shooting uh, at the Enterprise was just. Uh, it seemed like. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it yes. felt very, you know, uh, very wimpy almost. But then, you know, all it is is a distraction, and uh, and those little mini little shots that they make actually takes out things for a minute or two and actually it does it does a lot of damage that they don't really pursue the Romulan and let it get close to this uh to gump to so it's just uh you know there's that uh but it, it does feel you know other than that out you know exterior battle scene it does feel ominous that the Romulans are coming like the Romulans mm-hmm. are f- throughout the whole episode so I it, it pays off and I do like that. I do like that a, a threat becomes real. Mm-hmm. And as we, you know, go towards the end of season three, you see the Borg, which is an even worse threat and, a, and an even bigger deal. But, um, you know, this is, for me, this is also a missed opportunity because even though they do kind of spread out the, you know, spread out the Romulans, you, you don't get them to be as a big baddie as you kind of would want them to be. I think this is a missed opportunity for, for TNG is making the Romulans a bigger threat in, in, in the series than they- Yeah, they never do that. I mean, like there was a little bit more of that in season four. Right, sure. yes. Like, but, they, yeah. they're, but they're always kind of operating behind the scenes. That's their MO. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. So, you know, but I did feel like the escalating factor of, of them and, and you know, the, the standoff with the second Romulan vessel, mm-hmm. you know, it, you know, it's an extremely large ship, uh, you know, and it's I so don't, big. The yeah. Derek structure was huge. They're yeah. like as large as galaxy. Class. Like, I think they're a little bit bigger actually than the galaxy class, but then they have this like space in the middle, which makes zero sense, but whatever. It looks yeah. cool. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting design. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's huge. So it's just, uh, you know, I actually, it, it's so huge that, you know, when the first one gets blown up, you kind of get, you're like, wow, like a lot of people just died. Like a yeah, lot they're, of people. They're big, they're big shows. Lot, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, and the, the one thing I do kind of wish that we saw more of was a little bit more exploration of Gump 2 and, and, and Tam's relationship after they meet, you know, like that oh. there was a little, little bit more, you know, you kind of yeah. see see them push the enterprise and the mm-hmm. romulan ship away from the exploding star and then and data is suddenly back on the bridge by some magical thing which they don't even do the effect for it's right. like literally yeah. off camera and then they pan to see data there they make a little sound that's not really a transporter but sort of transporter-esque and he's there and so you know i think they they went over and above their CGI budget, their budget for the Romulan exterior. Well, they wanted to like keep some mystery, I guess, because they yeah. wanted to kind of have, you know, there's still a lot about GOM2 that they just didn't know about. And right. They kind of retained that. Yeah. So, so um, I'm trying to think of any other character moments that really stand out for me, but Data and, and Tam are a good one. Tam and Deanna. Um, yeah, it's it's sort and of like, everyone else being annoyed at Tam. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> there, it's it's Will Riker Princess. It's unlike last week's episode where everyone had had a role to play. This was oh yeah, more... I feel that's rare. Like after you mentioned that about 
the Icarus factor, I was like, you're right. But that's really, ra- that's really rare that everyone, yeah. literally everyone got, everyone had something to do. Yeah. This, in this yeah, case, that it, doesn't happen often. This doesn't happen. Yeah. In this episode, really. But yeah. Uh, you know, it was an enjoyable episode. I think that it, yeah, I'm uh, glad I suggested it. Yeah, I, I yes. think it's a good yeah, suggestion. You yeah, you're welcome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. I have nothing else to say about okay. Well, I, you know, definitely, I would, yeah, I think we, we recommend checking it out. It's a good, good one episode, kind of, you know, no arc needed, nothing. You can kind of jump in and, and catch an episode. And that maybe that's the other thing too, is the right. these episodes, none of these episodes need much introduction. Like you could, these are almost like some random oh. episodes that someone- They're all who, standalone episodic shows. Yeah. Right? It's that's true. the nature of it. Yeah. But you can so. kind of walk in and out of these, these, ep, these particular which is, episodes. Which is the point. Yeah. Yep. Hence the episodic nature of it. Okay. Yeah. Which for, again, we've talked about this, for better or for worse, you know. I think that that makes it easy, makes it easy to adjust. You can just pick it up, put it down, whatever. Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Strange New Worlds does this. Yeah, well, again, I think that their approach is to have episodic storytelling, but character arcs, which I think is good. Yeah, character Hopefully details will... to carry from episode to episode. Right. Not- you know, and not so much like Discovery or Picard. Which yeah, right. Has its pros and cons in terms of storytelling, unfortunately. Yeah, so. absolutely. There we go. Well, uh-huh. so we go. next time we oh, go yeah. into season four. So my pick, and I would love to hear from people if they think that this would be an underappreciated episode or not. So my pick from season four is a drumhead which definitely is one of my personal favorite episodes of season four. Though I define it as underappreciated because I don't really think that many people talk about it. Yes, there is the reference in that one Lower Decks episode. I don't remember the name of it. It's a trial episode. It's a trial episode, which is a great great episode. Great. It's a great episode. Um, What was the name of it? Do you remember? I don't remember the names of the episodes. Uh, I yeah I mean I remember like a few episodes like moist vessel I remember that oh or, yeah moist. or temporal edict like there were like a few clever uh, uh, yep. titles but I don't remember all of them um but this episode was good yeah I I don't remember the last time I watched I think I watched it last year actually I haven't watched it more recently but there's it's all drama it's like a lot of drama well don't spoil you know don't spoil it. one I haven't watched it in a long you haven't time. watched it in a long time has it been over a decade so I think it, I definitely I think it would be okay. yeah um okay. so we yeah. don't want to spoil it but that's what we're going to be talking about next week uh is the drumhead as we yes. continue our voyage through the un underappreciated episodes of TNG and can't believe that will put us more than halfway through our series yes yeah, it's crazy. Time is just flying by. Well, there we are. So hopefully, Veritas. Like it. Hopefully, you like it. Oh, was yeah. it Veritas? Veritas. Okay. This is the Lower Decks episode, episode eight, with the reference to Drumhead. But anyway, yes, anyway. I'm sure I'll like it. I, you know, I, I like we've said, we're we're TNG fans. That's where we, you know, I mean, I did watch some TOS early in my childhood, but TNG was sort of my star trek and it's yours so yeah i'm always up for uh some some jumping through the seasons and seeing different things so yeah i'll I'll have to look ahead and and get some ideas for season five i don't even remember what stood out for me in season five i need to look yeah we'll have to look and see so that is our segment on the underappreciated tng episodes tin man season three Season underappreciated three. season three episode yeah well cool so why don't we talk about off topic great so mike what have you been watching or reading other than star trek so uh, i mentioned it a couple episodes ago and I definitely finished it. And then as I was reading it or as I was finishing it up, 
I convinced you to read it. Uh huh. You did. You uh, did. Project Hail Mary. Yes, you get by... all the credit for this one. I do. Uh, Project Hail Mary. I got Johnson to read a book. Yes, I hate reading, uh, but this was a good book. This was a great book. So, yeah. So you know, and the funny thing is, I was thinking about it again today. Wait, are we gonna go into spoilers? Because we should. Yeah, we really should. All up. right. So if you haven't read any Which weird, probably latest is most book, people. <laughs> Yeah, because it literally right. just came out like what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Yeah, uh, the beginning of May, so two weeks ago. So yeah. if you don't want to be spoiled because yeah. you're trying to read Project Hail Mary, we suggest that you skip the next ten minutes, maybe 10, yeah. 12 minutes. Skip ahead. We'll, we'll yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, no, I really like this book. And why don't you, you, you start talking. So why don't you, why don't you finish your thought? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I am a huge Andy Weir fan. His books are so enjoyable. I'm not a I mean, huge I, Andy Weir fan. I only, yeah. I've only seen The Martian. I haven't read The Martian. So um, I've read The Martian. I've read Artemis. Uh, I've read, obviously, Project Hail Mary. Uh, yeah, it's just <laughs> only three books. Continue. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's written some others too. But um, yeah, it's just... It's his story. He's such a great storyteller. Like the way that he structures his books is just great. Like you, in, in this book, you get a structure where you are thrown into the middle of this situation, which I've already described a couple episodes ago, mm -hmm. where, you know, this guy wakes up and he's in another solar system and he needs to figure out why. Um, his two compatriots who are with him are both dead. Spoilers. So he is you know, all by himself. And he's trying to piece together how he got there, why he got there. Uh, so you get what is it or do like he literally yeah. doesn't know anything. Yeah. So you so he slow it slowly comes back to him. And it obviously begins. And I like with, like the problem solving, like his thought process, because a lot of it is like his internal monologue. Yeah. And he self identifies. He's like, huh, I I'm white, <laughs> you know, and I think I think about measurement in in feet. So I'm probably American. Like things like that. I was like, oh my God, it's so funny and interesting. Yeah, he has serious amnesia. He doesn't know how he got there. He doesn't know who, he doesn't even remember his name for a good portion of the first, you know, I would say the first half of the book um, before he realizes that. But he remembers discover, helping discover and study this, this parasite that's eating up this, the earth's sun soul so and the the sun is being dimmed to a point where it's going to create an extinction level event on earth because right, right. you know it sounds few, really crazy but when you read the book it's like oh this is convincing yeah the science is is compelling i mean or you know whatever i mean you're the biologist here you found the science compelling and interesting and i mean obviously it's sci-fi but you know, I always appreciate when like storytellers make such a concerted effort to how the science work. And obviously there's always going to be shortcuts. Like it's unavoidable. If it's sci-fi, there's going to be like, you know, it's like inertial dampeners. It's like, okay, how do inertial dampeners work? How do you dampen inertia? You know, but at least you're trying to address it some, you know, you're trying to recognize that inertia exists. So we need to do something about it, you know, but how, you know, how does it work? You know, you, there's really no explanation. Yeah. But so, I mean, there's a little bit of that that has to be, but yeah. he does a really good job trying to make it work with our knowledge of science, which I appreciate. Yeah. And you have a greater knowledge of science. I mean, I studied some science in college, so I, I mean, it did make enough sense, but I think anyone could pick this up and understand what's happening. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, so there would be some concepts that's like, oh, but it doesn't impact the story to a point. Where right. It. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's fascinating how the story unfolds, right? It's just fascinating to, to read, to enjoy. You're kind of, you're curious, like the, the way that Andy Weir builds up your own curiosity about what the hell is going on, his, um, is amazing. And, uh, you know, so you're like, I found myself like, what's going to happen next? What, yeah. like, what, 
like I if it felt yeah, I like, like I, compelled... I like read it in like three days. I, yeah, I, I listened to it in uh, probably four or five days. Yeah, I mean, I I really like I put it down. I would listen for hours and then be like, all right, I got to do some other things that require attention that I need, and <laughs> and then I would you know go back to it. But uh, yeah, it's it's bingeable, so bingeable because you're so curious about what's happening. So it's you know, and and you get to the end, or towards the end, and well, you're well, like, not even, well, are you skipping the part where he meets an extraterrestrial? Like, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. So he does, he does meet an extraterrestrial. I mean, that's a huge part of this book. That is, like, yeah, yeah. The, like the, as, the, as much as it is the main protagonist trying to problem solve his way through his situation and try to figure out a solution to save his planet. He, he meets, he, he meets first, first contact. Yeah, he meets he first, contact. first contact. Yeah. And that's the other 50% of this book. It's him trying to form a relationship with basically like, I, I you know, I thought, he was describing a Tholian, like, you know, like yeah. in the way that it was being described, this, you know, right. basically it's like this spider like rock creature. Like that's, that that's doesn't a, have sight that has no sight. So it's all based on sound and, and exists in like 300 Kelvin temperatures. Like it's like very, very hot. Yep. Um, and high pressure, um, yeah, it's a high pressure, highly corrosive to humans. I mean, yeah, you know, was, uh, yeah, I don't remember what the atmosphere was. Argon, I think. Argon. Uh, was it? The argon was the arg the material. Ar no, that was zen xenite. Or xenon. Xenite. Z xenon. Z yeah, xenon. Xenonite. Xenonite. Um, yeah, so. Whatever. Um, it was, I, it was a not, it was like not an oxygen nitrogen mix. Like it was not, it, it was so, hot was and it was high pressure and, uh, yeah, it was, it was toxic, bad. uh, to, to breathe. So all of those so big, things. Yeah. Big part of this book was him basically learning to communicate with this, with this, this alien. Yeah. Alien, and, yeah. And then eventually actually forming a friendship yep. with this alien in a way that was super believable. And I was like, this is so endearing. I love this. It's very much going to be like it, like in my mind in, because they're making a movie out of this, it's very much going to be kind of like a R2D2 kind of situation where he's, he's like, what is this? And then he like whistles or makes noise. And like, this is so cute. And he has like, you know, a lot of like cute comments Yes, like yes. Cute snarky comments. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's the best way to describe it. Yes, he does. And, and I'm excited to to see how they do that in the movies. Because uh, the voice on the audiobook was really good. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was really good. You know, you, you got the, the, yeah, you got the, the personality and the, the sarcasm and the, you know, and we, we text in Slack and, and you know, I, I do, how are you question? Because the alien right. answers you know, ask questions and instead of saying, he puts the in interrogative into the statement. So, right. Um, that was one of the cute aspects. Yeah, you really, you actually really grow to not only love Grace, but you, and, and care what's character. gonna happen to it, the, the main character, yeah. But you also get to know and love Rocky as well. So the alien, just a, the alien. Yes, <laughs> thank you yes. for that <laughs> breakdown. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's you know, and I'm still you know, the ending is still on my are, mind. Are you are you gonna just spill the ending? Everyone? No, I mean no, I don't want to spill the ending. But uh, I mean, at this point, people are still listening. They're probably just spoiled. But you know, I don't know if we. Yeah, to. I don't want to. I don't want to. And you know, and. Uh, but I do, I do really like that he goes after Rocky to help save him. So that is important. He does save Earth as well. Um, all right. Now that all kind of anything, so it's fine. Well, I mean, we're here to talk about it. I mean, what <laughs> else do you want me to do? But uh, um, spilling all the. But beach. I do have, I do have some some concerns and some like towards the end, it it loses some of the believability and the viability for me a little bit because it it's just like the different. epilogue does. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Epilogue, yeah, for sure the epilogue. You know, so 
uh, I like the epilogue. I like that. Oh um, no, I I I like the epilogue. I just I have a problem with the the viability of it. You know, just the you know, and, and the decision making to 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 make the decision he he's to making. That. Yeah. So, uh, but it's a very enjoyable book. I def- highly recommend it. You will not be able to put it down if you like. It's so uh, good. Yeah. You it's know, just like um, yeah. I think you know. I agree with you. I think that Andy Weir is just a great storyteller. I think that way the way that the story unfolds is because it's like peeling an onion and like you're yes. finding yeah. all these layers to the story because you're going through this character situation where he doesn't remember anything and you, so you don't know anything. Right. And as he remembers things, you relive it as he does. So it does provide a very interesting narrative framework that that is the way that his background is told. And then when he, when you come on to these twists of his background, like, oh, I didn't actually expect that. He yeah. also is like, I did not actually expect that because he's literally having flashbacks to yep. how he got to the situation. So yeah. yeah, I thought that that was a really, really cool um, framing device for the way the story was told. Again, the science, I really appreciate just the level of detail that's put into it. Um, and as much as I appreciate the science, I really do appreciate the way that Andy Weir characterize both Grace, the protagonist, but then also Rocky, the alien, and their relationship, which really is like the emotional crux of the story. Um, there's a lot of other things going on, including saving Earth, but it really does become like their joint adventure and how they work together to not only communicate and form a relationship, but how they come to rely and trust with each other in the process. So yeah, I just think it has so much going for it. And I, I really loved it. And I can't wait for the movie adaptation. <laughs> which will yeah, you know, I think I think, you know, I'm, I, I'll temper my expectations for the movie because the book was so great. But uh, hopefully they are able hopefully to it's good. Yeah, hopefully it's good. Yeah. So so that's the main read. I'm, I've just started reading yesterday and today the literally the first chapter of wonderlands but it starts the new star trek discovery novel about burnham's year before the discovery arrives how's it so far uh you know it's a little it's a little dry it's it's not there yet for me um but um you know i i hopefully it'll it'll get there um as things kind of unfold uh but it's a you know so far it's a lot of sahil and burnham so okay. um there's that and and uh so far but i haven't, oh, so he, haven't all, he really didn't have much to do i thought he would really have more presence in season three and didn't so yeah no um so i'm listening to that now and then uh i'm what else other than enterprise which i'm just enjoying watching um I have been watching The Bad Batch, which is the Star Wars Clone Wars oh, right, sequel. Right. Uh-huh. Um, so that's really, I the the first episode is phenomenal. Like the connections between, it's sort of another episode that's kind of concurrent with uh, the end of episode three, The Revenge of the Sith. Oh. Um, so it happens at that time. And then the, the subsequent episodes kind of follow follow what happens after that but um but the so the first episode is really really great and the other two the other two episodes are are okay Hmm. um it's it but i also have to remember that it's sort of geared towards a younger audience obviously right it is um you know there is a child main character that's part of part of this uh so uh, you know i'm just hoping that as this kind of builds up that, and, and Dave Filoni's in charge of it. So I'm sure it's going to be great. So, or I'm sure it's going to get better as time goes on, as they kind of reveal Who's that? things. Who's that? Who's this? Dave Filoni is uh, sort of the George Lucas successor. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't he's, know. Uh, he's, you know, involved in everything Star Wars. He did the Clone Wars. He worked with George Lucas he's uh he's really kind of he's been involved in the mandalorian 
Oh, okay. So it's uh, he's he's an executive producer basically, but kind of almost almost should be like the head of you know Lucasfilm at Disney. So uh, that's how. And but more on the story side and the executive producer level, that sort of piece rather than the business side. So yeah, so I'm watching that, and uh, then a couple of nights ago, I watched uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines. Oh right, I've never heard. Of the, it's a movie, right? It's an animated film. It was really enjoyable. I was laughing throughout throughout it. So it was kind of like one of those movies that really just hit my hit my funny bone in the the right way, and I was just enjoying it. It's about a crazy family who. Uh, a almost dysfunctional family that becomes super functional when the machines take over. And oh. uh, so it's, it's really interesting. Uh, it's, you know, um, so it's, it's, yeah, it was, it was funny. I, I was laughing. Dennis was looking at me, watching me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not enjoy it? Not as much now. Uh, it's He's funny. Very different you know, taste than us. Yeah. Yeah, he does. I, we and we have yeah we have such different tastes like there are things like i'll hear him laughing at something that he's watching and, uh-huh. and that brings me a little bit of joy his laugh so i think that when i laugh at something he he like he's like the world he's like well he's like this isn't that funny but then he's like but you're enjoying it so i'm happy for you so <laughs> like good for you <laughs> Not not good for you, but you know, you're just, enjoying your- uh, you, you know, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've been watching. Uh, because I really am on this enterprise rewatch. So yeah. As I'm cooking uh, dinner or whatnot, I um, or during lunch while I'm eating lunch, I'll throw on an enterprise episode. Or <laughs> oh my half- god! Yeah, it's sad when you run out. Yeah, you know, but I think that this this adventure through the seasons of Next Generation. Uh-huh. um are inspiring me to do some more of that but also i really 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 need to go back and watch deep space nine again. yes please. but i also but i and but also all of this has kind of put on hold watching things like for all mankind which i haven't watched yet oh my or, god uh, I can't or continuing my I babylon again. 5 rewatch which oh, I, right. you know so right. uh so there are you know some trade-offs but there are things out there that um that I have not watched yet because it, I'm one, I just need distraction and, and enjoyment and entertainment. And I'm, I am enjoying enterprise. So, but uh, yeah, I do need I'm to watch. I'm glad you are enjoying your Renaissance. I am. That's yes. Great. So what about you? What have you, what else besides uh, project Hail Mary? Have you been yeah. watching playing have you been playing any video games i have been playing video games uh, but i'm go. not really getting into it because it's 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 not really your thing um i've been playing this i play this game called near replicant which is actually a remaster of uh it's like a two, 2010 game and they remastered it for the ps4 and it's it's all about storytelling for me. So this is, it's a good action game, but it has this really detailed character story, which I always find interesting in games. I've talked about that before. Those are games that usually tend to attract me when it's fun to play, but then there's also like a really rich story to tell. So I played that, that was like 25 hours of my life. Um, so there's that. And um, so, yes, yeah, so the other thing I've been watching is Castlevania, the anime, which is based on the video game. It's probably the best video game adaptation I've seen. It's really good. Um, and I really enjoyed that. So that was 10 episodes. I watched it in one sitting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. So, you can just plant yourself in front I can of just, TV. yeah, I can just sit down and then get up like five hours later. <laughs> like... No problem. So I've seen I've seen some Castlevania. I know its story generally, uh, but I need to you know I don't know which seasons I've watched or which episodes, so I have no idea. But I I think it's because Dennis has watched it, so I'll have to tell him that season four is out for him to to watch as well. So all right, so you've been you've played twenty five hours of a video game. You've you've watched 
uh, you're still muted. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> so, 20 hours of video game. <laughs> um, five hours of Castlevania. Yeah, five hours of Castlevania. So, let me ask you this. Did Castlevania come to a conclusion? Yes. Like, did it end? It ended. Yes. There was a definitive conclusion. Everyone's story got some sort of resolution. It wasn't okay. just like an abrupt ending, thank God. So okay. it's actually really good. I, I actually highly recommend it, even if even if you know the basic premise of the video game, because honestly, not that there's a huge story. It's just kind of just like an action adventure game. It's it's just really richly done. So I, I think it's a really great anime. Great action, great set pieces. Loved it. Awesome. So Castlevania. And then I watched love netflix i watched love death and robots so oh, yeah. that's an anthology series it was fine i liked the first season a little bit more but the first season also had like 20 episodes and then this season had i think eight so, because they're splitting season two season three into distinct seasons um so it had a lot fewer episodes and i also watched all of the season in one sitting but they're all like, like the longest episode is probably like 15 minutes. You know, it's like, oh, right, right. Yeah. It's like watch... short films. Yeah. I did watch season one. Yes. So um, a long time ago. I feel like season one came up forever ago. I don't remember. Pre pandemic. And then what was a pleasant surprise is I was just um, looking for something to watch. And on Amazon Prime, you may have seen this on Amazon Prime or seen a commercial or something for Invincible. Have you seen? Oh this at yeah, all? I've seen. Yeah, I've seen. It's like a, it's a it's a cartoon. It right, is yeah. uh, based upon a comic book series by Rob, right. Robert Kirkman, who also did The Walking Dead. But so good. Eight episodes. I watched it in two sittings because each episode is like forty-five to fifty minutes. It's it's pretty just long for a cartoon. I I didn't really know anything about it. I sat is this down. Season one it. or is this one? Okay. And uh, I was like, "This is fantastic! It's so good! I think you should watch one episode." And if because there's like this big twist at the first at the end of first episode, I was like, "What the fuck?" And it's it's good. And if I had to compare it to a show another show it would be the boys it's like this which this, i still haven't watched the second season i understand of the boys. but this is probably more digestible than that um not that the boys is great too but this episode this series rather and it got renewed for seasons two and three already it also has a lot of star power like steven yoon um is in a center o and um other people <laughs> sorry so Really, really good. Um, I definitely recommend it for anyone that is interested in good characters, violence, I guess. Um, just good storytelling. So, yeah. Um, and I've also been watching The Handmaid's Tale, season four, because, you know, I love my dystopian dramas. So, yeah. So that's it. I think that's it. That's like most of what. I mean, what. That, that covers about 60 to 70 hours of your life right there. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that should cover it. I mean, it's only been a week. Oh, since and then I also podcast. watched Tenet. I watched Tenet yesterday. Oh, no. Oh, right. Two days ago. Tuesday. I watched, no, Monday. My, my God. Uh, I was like, what day is it? Um, yeah, I watched Tenet because it, um, it it's just came HBO. out on HBO Max. Right, yeah. And I swear, I like... I was like, I will watch this when it comes out. And I totally forgot about it. And I was like, again, look for something to watch. And I was like, oh, it's available. So that was two and a half hours. There we go. It's really good in a certain way. It is very convoluted, as is most of Christopher Nolan's storytelling. But it is very, very unique. Like, I would, that would be, I would say, the most interesting about it is very unique. And then, it's like, it, it's like Inception. You, did you watch Inception? Yeah. yeah. It's like the more you watch it, the more you're like, oh my God, there's like just so many layers to this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> you put like way too much brain power into telling the story. Um, 
it's even if you don't love the movie, you you kind of appreciate how intricate it is and how complex it is and how well it was executed. I did mention that to you. I was like, the execution is really good. So I do recommend Tenet. I don't know if I watch it again. I may watch it again just to see like why I didn't catch it first time, but it was, I, I did like it. I wouldn't say like, I loved it, but I really did like it. So worth a watch. There we go. So right. I think that about does it for off topic. I think so. What yes. we've been watching. Consuming. So before we wrap up, we should uh, give a shout out to fan sets. Our, yes, fan you know, sets. One of our sponsors at the truck geeks podcast network uh this month uh so it's you know it's after may 15th so they had some new pins come out on may 15th in, including uh narissa uh lieutenant nog and uh pin emojis mariner and captain pike from strange new worlds uh but also there's some you know so i grew up watching the super friends and uh they they do have the Wonder Twins now, a pin on that. So I'm looking at that and thinking, oh, I like that. Uh, there is the Titan pin as well. And um, oh, and then I was scrolling down through all the new pins and uh, Laris and Zaban. Zaban? How do you say his name? Zaban. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, don't so I don't know how you say his name. Two of my favorite characters from Picard. Uh, yes. I, wish, I wish we had gotten to see more of them. And they well, were in the they were in the prequel. Too. They were in the prequel comic, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, they are. It's fine. I mean, like they're they're on season two supposedly. So. Oh, that's awesome. I I really. That's why I, I heard. Who I knows? really love the rumors, actress. Rumors. Right, right. I love the actress who plays Laris. She's so. Uh, she is. She was in that other dystopian show, not dystopian, but uh, a post-apocalyptic. Which one is this? Uh. Oh man, why can't I think of it with swords and like into the Badlands? Yes, into the Badlands. I don't know how I just like remember that. Was, I, like, yeah, that was great. Great into the Badlands. Great, yeah, swords and uh, post-apocalyptic swords and, and got, dystopia. Yes, yeah. Uh, she was uh, the uh, one of the main characters in that. So oh, she was the mo the mother woman. Uh, you know, not the obviously woman, but um. Yeah, so I really, I really love Laris and 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 Zaban, and I hope I, Zaban, Zaban. I don't maybe. know. Yeah, so. uh, but anyway, uh, so if you go to fansets.com and put thirty dollars worth of pins, which I've listed probably twice that amount, and in different pins uh, already, you will get free shipping in the U S but if you also put in DS pride, all, all caps, in, all caps, you will get 10% off your order. 10%. Uh, so, and they're a small business and we are extremely happy that they support the truck geeks podcast network and deep space pride. So thank you. Fansets. Thanks. Fansets. Well, so I think that about does it for this week's episode. Um, again, next week, we will be talking about the drum head. So everyone can get excited about that. In the meantime, if you want to reach us through social media, Mike already kind of shared this earlier, but I will reiterate. You can reach us on Twitter and Instagram at Deep Space Pride, or you can email us at Deep Space, <laughs> Deep Space Pride at gmail.com and we will do our best to respond if we feel like it which we will if you email us mike will respond <laughs> anyway it was great talking to you mike yeah i can't wait to talk to you next week slash the, tomorrow. the, the drum head yeah slash as we make our las vegas plans so yes yes oh my god we have to buy everything yes wait yes well more money out the window for yeah, well you know what you what would you say you you work to travel is that what you said yeah you i work to vacation so to there vacation. we go um right. so yeah so. well thanks everybody uh we hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did if you didn't don't say anything right but if you did i'm we... not good at constructive feedback just kidding clearly <laughs>
<laughs> but if you did, would you please share this with one of your friends who might also enjoy it? That would be great. Yeah. Spread the love or spread the whatever. deep space pride love. There we go. All right. All right. Thanks, well, everybody. Bye, everyone. Deep Space Pride is a production of Coconut Media Works. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks podcast network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Coconut!